In today's tutorial, I want to show you how you can cut, edit and join videos together inside of Premiere Pro. Shalom to you my friends, my name is Isaac from Trego Studios. On this channel, we equip media volunteers with the necessary skills and knowledge that they require to serve God better in the media. If this sounds like you, I want you to consider subscribing to this channel and click the notification bell so that you can be notified the next time I post a new video. Like I said earlier, this tutorial is about showing you how you can cut and match videos and edit videos inside of Premiere Pro. So without further ado, let's get started. In my previous tutorials on Premiere Pro, I already told you how you open Premiere Pro, how you import files into Premiere Pro and the last one I did was how we can seek videos and audio together inside of Premiere Pro. So I'm going to assume you've already watched those videos and if you haven't watched them, you can check the link in the description below or click the title card that is displayed up here so that you can watch those previous tutorials. I already have Premiere Pro set up right here. I have synced the videos together and if you don't know how to sync videos together, you can watch my previous tutorial on how to sync videos inside of Premiere Pro. All right. So today, I want to show you how you can mix videos together. On this particular example, I have three cameras synced together with the audio. So camera one is occupying the V1 layer, camera two is occupying the V2 layer, and camera three is occupying the V3 layer. And same thing with the audio. You notice that I already moved the audio of these cameras because I don't want to use the audio coming from the camera. But I have synced the videos with the clean audio coming from the mixer. And that is what is occupying this audio 4 layer right here. Okay, how do we mix these three cameras together? So presently, you'll notice that if you scroll through this video, you are only seeing the third camera. And that's because it is the camera that is on the topmost layer. All right. So, um, every other cameras are hidden under this layer you know just like if you've worked with photoshop or any design software you notice that the way elements are stacked on the layers that's the way they will be displayed all right so if your topmost layer occupies your space then the layers that are under are going to be hidden that's the same way it works in Premiere Pro for me to see the other cameras then I will have to hide the first video if I hide it you see the second camera if I hide the second camera I'm going to see the first camera you see they are performing the same action but because they are stacked on top of each other you can only see one camera at a time so that's it now that's what this tutorial is about there are times you want to use the first camera to display an action say for instance that in this case the speaker is backing this camera so it won't be nice to use this particular shot for this at this point so what if we want to use the first camera and not the third camera so if you want to use this third camera uh -huh. obviously you can keep hiding and showing it because if you try to hide the video at this point uh -huh, it's going to hide the whole layer throughout the entire sequence so hiding is not the way to go about it there are two methods basically to mixing videos inside of Premiere Pro there's a manner method of cutting and mixing videos which I'm going to show you and there's also a mode camera view method where you have you are able to see all the camera views on one side of the program view and then you select which particular video you want to show pattern i'm going to show you so you're going to understand that better but starting with the manual method how are you going to cut this video how are you going to mix this video if you wanted to do it all right so now let's say i start from this particular point and i want to start with my camera one now what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut at this point the other videos and hide them so the shortcut for cutting or the tool you need to cut is this razor tool so when i select the razor tool i'm going to cut you notice that it snaps to this point if your marker your razor is not snapping to the exact point where you want to cut it then make sure that this icon is highlighted snap to you know icon and the shortcut is s in case it is you can, if you press s it gets deactivated if you press s again it gets activated so i want to cut it at this point i'm going to and I've already selected my result so the shortcut for that is the C. So I'm going to cut at this point. <laughs> now because I want to maintain my camera one, I might not have to cut that. I don't need to cut that actually. So now I'm going to hide. Now to hide this the two layers that are on top of camera one, which you don't want to use. You want to use camera one at this point, but you need to get rid of the layers on top of it which is camera 2 and camera 3 all right so hide that 
you notice as I come to the edge of the video, you see this the icon on the cursor. This icon. So this icon allows you to tuck in your videos. All right. Now, anything outside the edge, if you are not at the edge, that is if you are somewhere around there in between the layer, you know, you are not at the edge, then you are going to notice that the icon changes to a pick, a, a selection tool. Now, if you use this to drag, it's going to make your video out of sync. But that's not what we want to do. We want to tuck it in. Any area you don't need it need those videos you are going to talk in talk it into that point so i can decide to talk it in up to this point now that leaves me with this distraction from the second camera so i'm going to talk that in so that's why i had to cut it because i don't want to affect the videos that are previous it it is from this point that i don't want to make use of these videos so i talk it in again notice that symbol not this selection tool symbol but you know this particular symbol that allows you to talk it in all right so i've gotten rid of those videos that are stacked up together on this at this particular point so when i continue playing i'm going to look for a point where i want to change the camera again and also i need to check because i might have back to school as here that you also permit me not not to talk about the book of abacom for now so at this point i want to use the third camera now, because I have talked it in, the videos are still, you know, synced with the audio. So all I have to do again is to talk it back out, that is to extend it back out. Now, notice that I'm not using the selection tool right here. You know, I'm not. I'm making sure that I'm not seeing this kind of symbol on the cursor until I see this red symbol with a arrow. It can be like this, you know, talking. I mean pointing outside or pointing inside just make sure you're seeing that red arrow there and that red cursor there with the arrow so i'm going to talk it out to the point where i need it back so at this point i want to use this particular camera so you notice that if i play it if i go back a bit and i play it again you notice that So you will notice that it's cut from the camera one to the camera three because I have talked it in at that point. Now you notice that even though I did not talk in camera one at this point, but because camera three is tagged on top of camera one, so it makes camera one invisible at this point. So I might not need to worry myself about talking it in cam talking in camera one at this point. So I can leave my camera one always to be on again because any video I want to use above camera is already stacked on top of it, so it's going to automatically overlay those videos. So, if for instance, again, at this point I want to use the third camera, probably because there is an audience shot that I want to use. Now, I'm going to cut at this point again. I'm going to cut camera 3 at this point and tuck it in. Now, you notice that when I tuck it in, I go back to camera 1, but camera 1 is not my intention, I want to use camera 2. So I'm going to tuck out camera 2 or bring it, extend it back out so that I can use the video from camera 2. Alright, so let me rewind so that I can see the result of this. So you see, just by cutting, hiding, tucking in, extending, you have already made an edit. Now you have to be careful just like I've been saying. Make sure that you don't move any of these layers because if you move them, they are going to be out of sync. The audio is going to be saying something different and the video is going to be showing something different. Now notice that we have already muted the audio from the camera. So, you have to be, especially in cases where you're using an audience shot, you might not know that you have already gone out of sync because you are not seeing the voice of the speaker. This is the manual method of doing it. You are going to go through this whole process till you get to the end of your shot. You cut, join, cut, join, hide. So basically, all the tools you ever need is your selection tool. Uh -huh. It is when you have your selection tool that you can tuck in and out. Your result tool when you want to cut, the shortcut is C. 
and after you finish cutting or chopping your videos that's why it's called results you know to cut your videos after you finish cutting your videos you can go back to the selection so using v as your shortcut v as your shortcut to hide to talk in not to talk out back your videos understand so your results to shortcut you see and your selection to shortcut is v basically those are the things you need to cut and join your videos together all right so thank you for watching this video in a later tutorial i'm going to be showing you how you can use the multi camera view method to cut edit and join your videos inside of premiere pro and that's going to make your work faster depending on how fast your computer is actually because if you use the camera multi camera view method it might slow down your work it might be better of using this cut and edit method and and the multi camera view method is going to save you a lot of time if you have a fast computer and you're working with especially when you're working with a lot of cameras like say more than up to three or more than three your life will be better of using the multi camera view method all right so i'd like you to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so that you can be notified when i post this video remember to drop your questions if you have any questions drop them in the comments below i'm going to be answering them if there is a need to do a video on those questions i'm going to be doing them so thank you for staying to the end of today's video till i come your way next time remain in the lord's service god bless you bye